Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today we had great news from the Wall Street Journal. Pfizer said that its vaccine is 95% effective, not 90% like they said on November 9th, but now 95% effective. It's seeking authorization from the FDA to be able to use the vaccine and maybe go on track to distribution by the end of the year in December. However, all this great news out and one begs the question, why did the US markets go down today? November 18th. Dow Jones was down 1.16. S&P was down 1.16. Canada was down 0.36. Not only that, but right now, U.S. futures are down right now a little bit, 0.34%. What's going on? Isn't this good news? What's happening? I'm going to try to give you guys an update because I think the answer is actually in the short interest ratio for you looking at the U.S. markets. So I want to give you guys a quick five to ten minutes update as to what's going on in the markets. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy. Please see the below description area as to who I am. I uh, would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel as I just started it this year. Right now, the time check is... 6 16 p.m it is november the 19th now i'm going to go through a lot of different technical stuff today uh looking at the charts and also looking at uh sort of the pivot levels and then at the, also i'm going to go into the second part of the video which is looking by sectors right now which sectors are under pressure and i think this is going to come as a surprise because there is one sector right now that's getting heavily sold and the rest of them are not and at the finally at the very end i'll give you my opinion as to what's going on in the markets so Let's start with the markets and let's start with the charts. We're looking at right now the Dow Jones chart. And let's start with a top down analysis. We'll look through the Dow, the SP, the NASDAQ, and then look through the different indices. Where are the big levels? And then afterwards, we'll get into other sectors. Right now, the Dow Jones is at trading at 29,438. And interestingly, the levels, uh, not that much momentum, not that much things going on. Actually, let's look at the ETF here Dow Jones ETF. And looking at the Dow ETF here, okay, not much big volume here. Volume is very, very slim at the moment. Notice that this is a big gap up day, big, big gap up today that we had on November 9th with the Pfizer news. And ever since then, we've sort of been trending upward and upward and upward. Volume has been thin though since that big gap up day. MACD continues to go up, yet it is in a little bit of danger of turning. It hasn't turned yet, but it is showing signs of a little bit of caution. RSI is still trending to trend up right now. I wouldn't take this too seriously unless it breaks below 50. Uh, Bollinger Band is also sitting in the middle right now. Not much to worry about. Looking at the SP500, a little bit different here. Very similar chart, although we didn't have a big gap up here. And note that the MACD looks looks a little bit closer to crossing over but it hasn't crossed yet so I wouldn't cut everything yet and say oh my god it's too late but it's showing a little bit of a crossing here it almost maybe about to happen otherwise everything looks the same Bollinger Band is pretty thin volume is thin RSI hasn't crossed yet now the Nasdaq now looking at the Nasdaq 100 a little bit of a different chart looking at the ETF here very thin volume almost nothing nothing's going on in the tech stocks right now very very thin for the ETFs and MACD is very slim here, probably the closest maybe to crossing, but it still hasn't crossed yet. Bollinger Band is also sitting in the middle. Now, looking at this index, you might say to yourself, OK, what's the breaking point? Where is the level on which we should be uh, sort of taking note and be cautious right now to say, OK, uh, we should be worried if it breaks this level, then we should watch out. I think we should be really looking at right now the Dow, because what's pushing the market right now is the Dow Jones, not the Nasdaq. Now it's the S&P. Remember, guys, the weighting is very different between the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. The S&P 500 versus the Dow Jones uh, is no S&P 500 has a much larger weight in the, uh, let's say, the tech versus the Dow. The Dow has a much larger weight in the industrials. This is the red region. So industrials, uh, also financials, also consumer discretionary. These have a larger weight in industrials. Therefore, guys, it's called the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And it's only 30 different companies, but it moves based on more of the traditional stocks right uh not less of the high tech exposure now looking at the dow here currently right now the level is at 29,438 now looking at the pivot point analysis right now we see here 
uh guys pivot point uh just to give you guys an update it's basically the high plus the low uh plus uh the closing day uh price and then you come up with a pivot and you know divided by three that's the pivot point and then you use that to come up with different levels of resistance and uh support levels now the very first level of support i see here is around Dun, 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 dun. It's actually quite uh, close. 29,270 and then 20,100 here. Uh -huh. So 29,270, that's very close. Uh, and then 29,100. I think that's a big level here. 29,100 here. 29,100 is the level in which there was a big gap up for the Dow here on November 9th. As long as it holds there, I say that we're okay. But if it breaks here, then we have something to worry about. So as long as we're holding this level, it looks okay to me at the moment. Now, also looking at the Dow Jones, just looking at the uh, volatility and what's going on, we'll notice that it's kind of interesting because the Dow right now, the uh, implied volatility for the ETF DIA is at a 37 percentile rank for the volatility, meaning that there's still some volatility left, as in there's still people buying, I'd say, put options right now. Because if you look at the SKU right now, for the most part, it's sitting still. And if volatility is still a little bit higher than normal, it means that people are still buying a little bit of put options. You compare this with, let's say, the NASDAQ, however. If you look at the NASDAQ, the volatility ranking is only at 29%. It's much lower. So interestingly, even though the NASDAQ is not performing as well, it seems that people are purchasing less insurance in the NASDAQ ETF versus the Dow. Uh, so interestingly, this to me, I feel like if people are still purchasing insurance in the Dow, then there's room for it to go up because it means that there's still a little bit of worry in the market. And that's usually a good thing, uh, especially if you look at, uh, let's say, the SP 500. Now, this is super interesting. If you look at the short interest ratio here, I found this to be fascinating here. Let's look at the short interest ratio for, let's say, the Dow Jones ETF here. Dow Jones ETF. Very interestingly here, the short interest ratio really hasn't moved that much the last few days. Right now it's at 17.74, really not moving so much, right? This is the Dow Jones DIA ETF. However, if you look at the SP500, look at this big move, whoop, big up. And now big move down. Now it's back at 17.45 as it reported, so it's right back to average. But you'll note that big update here was on November 9th. So the day that the vaccine was announced, there were a lot of actual big ETF players who were shorting the SPY ETF. As in, there seemed to be that there was probably some, maybe some positioning going on, but also maybe the fact that people were maybe in a little bit of disbelief regarding Pfizer's vaccine. And then we see momentarily days after the short interest ratio went all the way back down to 8.46, very, very low level. This was actually probably due to the fact that there's more and more announcements coming out, especially regarding the uh, Moderna vaccine, et cetera. So I think that this had a big impact, especially because from what I remember correctly, Moderna vaccine, I think this came out right around here, right? It's November 16th, November 13th. So short interest ratio came down a lot lower as probably there's speculation of another vaccine coming out. So that's the overall indices right now uh now let's actually look into the extra sectors here looking by sector here i'm going to look at the different etfs right now regarding today's down move again very little in the tech space uh very little down volume and let's say i'm looking at the volume right now volume right now in the retail space and very little movement down right now in the consumer discretionary space uh, financials, very little down move. Energy, very little down move. Industrials, not that much. Uh, IWM, which is the small cap Brussels ETF, not much. And HYG, not much going on. The one sector where there's a big volume is here, healthcare. Healthcare stocks getting hit hard. Now, I think this is a combination of news. This is probably a combination of the fact that the fact that um, Amazon is now coming into the health care space. Uh, you're not going to be able to buy. Americans are going to be able to buy prescription drugs uh, from Amazon instead of using Rite Aid, instead of using a lot of these clinics, instead of using pharmaceutical companies. So I think that's hitting the healthcare sector. But that actually news came out two days ago with Amazon. The fact that this is a big volume hit today probably indicates to me that there's probably big sellers here uh regarding what's going on with coronavirus probably people who are buying these healthcare stocks thinking oh they're going to benefit a lot because there's more and more and more and more virus cases coming out and now it looks like maybe the virus is going to be solved as moderna and pfizer both have vaccines with 90 95 percent efficiency rate 
probably indicating that a lot of people are selling because there's going to be less coronavirus patients going on. That's what's causing the movement down in the markets at the moment. So overall, that's not a bad thing for society. It just means that there's less patients and healthcare stocks will be sold. But do note that healthcare is a percentage of the Dow Jones and the S&P right now. It's not that big at the moment. Healthcare, and they're both around 13, 14%. So I don't think it should have that much of an impact. Okay. So listening to all of this, what's my analysis on what I think you should do with your money going forward hmm well i think that regarding the dow jones as long as we hold that level that we was talking about twenty nine thousand one hundred, then we're in the safe zone so we have to keep watching this twenty nine thousand one hundred here this is the big gap up uh, that we made here if we break this this is like an island right now if we break below this gap if we go back below the island that would be dangerous. So I'm watching right here around 29,000, 29,100. See if we break that or not on the close. Uh, let's see how we perform for the rest of the week. If we break that, then the MACD actually might turn back lower. So we should watch out. Otherwise, we should keep an eye there. And then the second thing we should keep an eye out, I think, is low regarding the healthcare uh, ETF. It's actually just see here. If there's going to be more and more selling pressure here. That's probably going to impact the Dow at the moment. So otherwise, right now, I think you guys continue to invest right now long term, the same as you normally would for your retirement. Don't worry too much. Continue to do this on your own don't use the robo advisors again see my previous video that i did a few hours ago i'm heavily against this i think it's a terrible idea so that's for your long-term account keep in charge of your own destiny don't pay fees to other people and do this on your own it's not that hard there's so many etfs out there and you can just do this spending only maybe just even one hour a month just allocating your stocks now short-term investing right now I think you continue to buy and continue to ride the wave up. And if you're a little bit worried about a market coming down, then maybe somewhere to be short right now would be 8XE because this is the healthcare stock. This is the healthcare index. This may have a little bit of down pressure. So if you want to hedge with something, if you feel like you're just a little bit worried, this may be the sector right now to put in a little bit of a short position for your short term portfolio. Thanks again for watching my video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, please press the like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. Thanks again, guys. Have a great week. I'm going to go eat dinner now and go to the gym. So have a great night. Good luck. Good trading.